I would like you know to start my presentation by sharing my screen with you. And uh, okay, um, this program, uh, my presentation is in collaboration with uh, uh, IEC as well as the. Uh, Unitarian Church uh, of San Francisco. I would like to briefly mention that uh, uh, human rights organizations started, you know, with the after Second World War, uh, with the help of Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, when the UN declared the uh, basic human rights in 1948. Uh, all Muslim countries, including Iran, accepted and signed that, except uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, since <clears throat> I came to United States in 1966, I have always volunteered for the Amnesty International because of the human rights, you know, uh, that I believed in. However, uh, since I retired, um, I have become the coordinator of the group in Wisconsin. Uh, and my disclaimer in this presentation is that uh, my, this is based on my personal uh, encounters with the Islamic Republic of Iran and has not been endorsed by Amnesty International. Since Khomeini came to Iran, in 1979, many of us left the United States and went to Iran with the hope that this is a government of the people, by the people, for the people. Soon after, the dress code hijab became compulsory and the military students seized the uh, US embassy in Tehran. Uh, which was in retaliation to the CIA coup in 1953 when those, uh, Dr. Mossadegh was removed. Uh, in 1980 to 1983, there was cultural revolution and they closed on the university. At the same time, the war between Iraq and Iran started. And uh, this war took eight years, and for the first time, biological and chemical weapon was used uh, on, uh, in the war. And of course, uh, West never uh, condemned uh, this warhead. Uh, in 1980, when Khomeini was in power, he actually uh, ordered a group of four people uh, to organize and, and implement executions of people uh, who were not conforming uh, to the Islamic Republic of Iran. And in 1988, uh, within a matter of a few months, 5,000 to 6,000 political prisoners and ethnic and religious minority were executed. When the Khomeini was gone, his leader, uh, next leader, Ali Khamenei, defended the, the 1988 execution and supported Raisi, who was instrumental uh, in the execution, and said whoever were killed in 1988 uh, were terrorists. Sadly, after that, uh, President uh, Raisi has continued uh, executions of innocent people, including minors, political prisoners, Baha'i faiths, Kurds, Baluch, and Arab minorities. And he has served in various capacity before becoming the uh, president. And in, nine, in 2021, and the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights inquired the uh, state ordered mass executions by the Raisi and Raisi's leaderships and has imprisoned many <coughs> political prisoners, including uh, Nassim today. Uh, who has been the defender of the human rights. The policy of 
Islamic Republic is actually to silence peaceful demonstration, including but not limited to, to torture and uh, uh, arbitrary detaining of the uh, family member as well. According to an uh, Amnesty International uh, uh, video which was released, uh, many of these prisoners are misbehaved, uh, tortured, and raped, and as though there is no accountability uh, or fear of uh, uh, any repercussions. Uh, for over five years, uh, Nassim Radcliffe, a UK charity worker, has been separated from his family, from her family, and her seven-year-old daughter. Uh, and there has been no transparency in regards uh, to uh, what uh, Raisi and the uh, uh, judiciary system in Iran is doing uh, with uh, uh, the people who are um, under their care. According to AI uh, shows, uh, I guess I mentioned that uh, um, lack of uh, uh, investigation constitute you know, violations of human rights for which Iran has been signature in uh, 1948. This is an example of uh, Zainab uh, Jalolian, a Kurdish uh, activist, uh, who uh, has been put in prisons uh, for a long time. And despite activities of uh, Amnesty International uh, to free, uh, to secure her freedom, now she is losing her sight and has been there for many years. Um, last few weeks in uh, November 2021, there was Auburn Tribune, uh, which was investigating the Iran's atrocity of November 2001. I'm sorry, I'm still recovering from my COVID. And, uh, and this Tribune, uh, shared an account of the peaceful demonstrations by the people, which has actually started with uh, uh, objections to the rise of the gas and fuel. And soon it turned into a, <coughs> a bloodshed, not only in large city, but, but also in a small uh, areas as well. Uh, human rights uh, groups have started some initiative as a minimum form of justice, accountability for this atrocity. Namely, the UN should inquire by a group of uh, international uh, independent group to investigate the Oman incident of 2019. <coughs> I have the website, which is a YouTube of the presentation that Amnesty International did at the Tribune. And uh, it shows the data as home, uh, accountability of every day as how many people were killed. <coughs> And the imprisoned human rights defender um, continues uh, by, uh, by Islamic Republic of Iran. And uh, uh, they also call um, upon civil society to, to learn the people. The report that was published was December 2000. To one, and it has the name and the situation of all the uh, prisoners in Iran. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>